arrow tells me. So I am the FSM is in state Q1. The tape head after reading A, it will write to write B into the cell and move towards right. And the FSM will switch to Q2. Okay. In the lowermost arrow, what it is there? So after reading A, after reading A, the FSM will move to Q3 and the tape head will write D and move towards left. Clearly, these two are non-deterministic because on the same input symbol A, I can I am performing two different things. Understood? Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. so it is non-deterministic and hence and since in a Turing machine there is nothing non-deterministic. Okay, everything is deterministic in a Turing machine. So it is not valid. In a Turing machine, I always for a given input symbol and a given state, there is only one possible transition. Okay, here for a Q1 and input symbol A, I have two possible transitions and hence it is not valid. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay, now let us draw another thing to... Suppose I am in Q1, okay, moving to Q2, A slash B comma R, and moving to Q3, B slash T comma L. So is it a valid one or invalid one? Yeah, it's a valid one because I am going to two different, I am switching to two different states and behaving differently with two different input symbols. Okay. Now, let us see the concept of halting. So, I have already told you. when a Turing machine halt, halting of a Turing machine. So tell me. So when uh, it reaches a non-final state from where uh, no possible transitions can occur, no further transitions so can occur. a Turing machine halts if it reaches a state from where there is no possible transition. Okay. Now, if that state happens to be a final state, then Turing machine accepts the string or else the Turing machine reject the string. Okay. So, so the behavior of the Turing machine can be categorized into two parts. First, either it halts or it may go to an infinite loop. Okay. Now, if it halts and if the state is final, then it accepts the string or if the state is not final, not final, then it rejects the string. Okay. And if it may enter in, into an infinite loop, then also it rejects the string. It, it does not reject the string, it enters into an infinite loop. I cannot decide whether I can accept or reject the string. Okay. So such strings are called as undecidable. Okay. The Turing machine cannot decide whether to accept or reject a string. Understood? 
<laughs> okay. Now let us with this uh, concept. So all the concepts related to a Turing machine, I think it's done. What a Turing machine contains, how it works. So uh, how it works, you should write uh, the initial condition of the Turing machine on every step what the Turing machine do and finally what can happen to a Turing machine. Okay. And we have defined the transition function. Now uh, I think I have forgotten to mention. So finally, what will be the mathematical definition of a Turing machine? Can someone just quickly tell me? So mathematically I can tell that a Turing machine is a tuple. How many tuples? Let us see. So M is equal to first Q will be the set of states. Okay. There will be a input alphabet set sigma. <coughs> The tape, alphabet. tape alphabet gamma, mm -hmm. there is a transition function delta, delta. there is a starting delta. state q0 delta. and there is a final set of states f and what extra? Blank. There is a blank symbol blank. capital B. Okay, so these things constitutes the uh, means mathematically if uh, someone asks uh, what will be the mathematical definition of a Turing machine so it will be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 7 tuple thing. Okay, represented as uh, shown in this uh, slide. Understood? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Now, now people says that uh, Turing machine is much powerful than a normal DFA. So, if uh, we can simulate a DFA using Turing machine, then I can say that any language which is accepted by a DFA will be accepted by a Turing machine. Okay. Yes, sir. So, so let us see a small example. Okay. So, so, so the question is, construct a Turing machine. Let me write you. Turing machine that accepts the language. L is equal to A A star where the alphabet set sigma is A. First of all, the language A A star is a regular language or not? Tell me. If someone asks that L is equal to A, A star is a regular language or not, what you will answer? Yes. What? Yes, sir. Why? Yes. Why? Because it can, it can access. I couldn't hear you. Sir, uh, like we can construct a DSA which can uh, access this. So, so the theorem says uh, of regular expression says that if there exists a regular expression for a language, we can always construct a epsilon NFA for it or a we can always construct a machine that can accept the strings of that language. So since I am I am writing L as a form of regular expression, that means this L can always be accepted by a finite automata. The theorem as for the theorem and hence it is a regular language. Understood? Any language represented in, which can be represented in terms of regular expression is a regular language. Okay. So it's a regular language and uh, that means so if you want to draw a uh, t uh, normal DFA, what you will do? So it is a starting state, suppose Q0. Okay. On, on a transition to A, it will go to Q1 and remain, and the Q1 is a final state. And from Q1, yes, any sir. possible transition of A, it will remain there. Yes, sir. Okay. So this is the DFA representation for this language that accepts this language. Now let us try to draw a Turing machine that accepts this language. So 
So suppose my input string is suppose my input string is a a a a. Okay. So a a a a and the rest of the things are blank. So I am representing it as b. So what is my initial condition? My tape head points to the starting input symbol a. Okay. And my and my FSM is at starting state Q0. So I am at Q0, which is a starting state. Now on reading A, what will happen? On reading A, the language tells